athlete, a superstar in his sport, will be the subject of the biography round on Sports Challenge. Last week's champions, the Brooklyn Dodgers, Carl Erskine, Jackie Robinson, and Duke Snyder. They'll meet the challenge of the three greatest jockeys of all time. Willie Shoemaker, Eddie R. Carroll, and Johnny Longdon. And now here is your host, the award-winning voice of the Rams and the Angels, Dick Enberg. Thank you, Johnny Gilbert, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome fans from coast to coast and around the world to Sports Challenge. This week, our champions, the Brooklyn Dodgers from 1955. Messrs. Erskine, Robinson, and Snyder have been studying all week to try to defend their crown, and they'll defend the challenge from three of the greatest, if not the greatest, jockeys in the history of the sport. Bill Shoemaker, Eddie R. Carroll, Johnny Longdon. Gentlemen, I've done my homework, and I realize that between just the three of you, you have won over 17,000 races worth over $100 million. <laughs> Just for fun, you're the greatest in the game on top of those tremendous animals. Your favorite horse of all time, Bill Shoemaker. Oh, I'd say probably Swaps. Eddie? Citation. Oh, I'd say Count Fleet. Oh, three great ones. Swaps, Citation, and Count Fleet. Three great jockeys, the Brooklyn Dodgers, the champions, and each team is competing for $1,000 worth of AMF Void Sports Equipment, runners-up worth $500 worth. Johnny, for what youth groups are today's teams playing? Well, Dick, this week, the Brooklyn Dodgers are playing for the Neighborhood Evening Community Center of Brooklyn, New York. And the Hall of Fame jockeys represent the Father Flanagan's Boys' Home of Boys Town, Nebraska. Voight, from basketball to bowling, scuba gear to golf. Voight stands for durability and consumer value. And it's been that way for 50 years. Okay, Dick. And we'll begin our first category, men, with famous finishes. And a finish that cost a team a title on opening day. Right after this sports challenge timeout. Brooklyn Dodgers against the jockey greats. Men, our first round, the category famous finishes. Opening game, 71 NFL season in New Orleans. But it turned out to be the whole season for the Los Angeles Rams. Three seconds left. Saints trailing by three are on the Ram one-yard line. Tie, trailing 20 to 17, one second left. Archie Manning rolling to the left, hit at the one, tackle, fumbles the ball. The Rams recover, but hold on. It's a touchdown for New Orleans, and the Saints win it 24 20. This sellout crowd of 80,000 going wild. The Rams are furious, but the Saints have upset the Rams 24 20. An important play for the Rams who finished second instead of first in their division by just a half a game. For 20 points, your question. Archie Manning was the second college player drafted in 1971. Who was the first player picked in 1971 by the pros? Duke Snyder. Uh, the quarterback at Stanford. What's his name? Plunkett. Jim Plunkett is correct for 20 points. The Heisman Award winner. I thought you were going to go into a little Spanish yeah. ballet there for a moment, Duke. <laughs> You've earned the two free throws. This finish brought about a predictable victory, but the margin was amazing. Let's check the stretch run of the 1943 Belmont Stakes. Here's Brian Field. Longdon sitting still and peeking back. Nothing to worry about. And Count Fleet speeding along on his own carriage in the stretch at Belmont Park. Easy victory that it was. He nevertheless lowered the track record by two-fifths of a second. Count Fleet, the winner of the Belmont by 25 lengths. 25 lengths. Now you know why Johnny Longdon liked Count Fleet best of all. Your question, Dodgers, that 25 length win in the Belmont gave Johnny Longdon and Count Fleet the triple crown of racing. For 10 points, which of the triple crown's three races is the youngest? Is the youngest the Belmont, the Kentucky Derby, or the Preakness? You have five seconds. Grant. Preakness. The Preakness is incorrect. So we double the point total for the jockeys. Is the youngest of the Triple Crown races the Belmont Stakes, the Kentucky Derby, or the Preakness? Belmont. The Belmont is incorrect. It's the Derby. The Kentucky Derby is the youngest of the three. Score remains 20 to nothing. 
Bill Shoemaker just looked at Johnny Longdon and said, and you were there too, Johnny. That was in 1875. All right, the second free throw. This was the spine tingling finish of a brilliant World Series pitchers battle between Bob Turley of the Yankees, Clem Labine of the Dodgers. Casey Stengel has ordered Bob Turley to walk Duke Snyder. One out, bottom of the 10th inning here at Ebbets Field. No score. The Dodgers here in the sixth game need a win to stay alive in this 56 series. The winning run, Jim Gilliam at second base. Snyder at first, and here comes Jackie Robinson. Turley has allowed only three hits. One out, bottom of the 10th from the belt. Turley delivers. Robinson swings a line drive, left field, slaughter over and in. It's over his head against the wall. Here comes Gilliam around third base. Gilliam scores. The Dodgers win 1-0 on a clutch base hit by Jackie Robinson. Jackie, when you hit that ball, it appeared that Enos Slaughter might catch it. Enos Slaughter looked as if he might be able to catch the ball when it first left your bat. Is that how you felt, or did you even see the play as you were racing toward first? I knew he didn't have a chance. You knew he didn't have a chance. <laughs> well, historians say that he misjudged it just a little. But Enos Slaughter has had his unforgettable moments in World Series. Let's go back to 1946, when he scored the winning run all the way from first base on a single to give the Cards the seventh and deciding game win and the series. Name the team beaten by Slaughter's daring base running. Boston. Boston, Boston, Red, Boston Red, Sox. Red Sox is correct for 10 points. First round score. Brooklyn Dodgers 30. The Jockeys nothing. All right, here's the all-important toss-up question, men. The category, golden era of sports. And that means the years of the 20s and the early 30s. And the golden era's biggest name, Babe Ruth. It's the 1932 World Series, Chicago. Delivers and Ruth swings it into long drive deep to right center field. It's going, it's gone. A home run for Babe Ruth, and he gestures to this Wrigley Field crowd. And remember, Ruth had pointed to that same spot in the stands that Bambino strikes in Chicago. In Ruth's top season, 1927, he hit 60 home runs. Roger Maris hit 61 in 61. Only once has a man hit 59 home runs in a single season. Who is he? Carl Erskine, I must have your answer immediately. Hack Wilson. Hack Wilson is incorrect. He hit 56 for the Chicago Cubs. So we can give the jockeys a chance to hear the question again and a clue. Who is the only man in Major League history to hit just 59 home runs? Maris, 61. Ruth, 60. Who hit 59? And the clue is he did it in 1921. Bill Shoemaker. <laughs> you have five seconds. You have five seconds. I was going to say Hank Greenberg. Hank Greenberg hit 58. It's a little tricky. Babe Ruth was the only man who hit 59 as well as 60. So we'll play the two free throw questions as if they were toss-ups. You're both alive now on this question. Worth 10 points. Golden Era had its man in a golden saddle, Earl Sandy. Going into the 1930 Kentucky Derby aboard Gallant Fox, Sandy already was a two-time Derby winner. Here's Clem McCarthy. In the stretch, it was Gallant Fox in the lead with Gallant Knight and Crack Brigade. The Fox of Bel Air was too much for them, and Sandy brought him on to win easy. He was the third Kentucky Derby victory for Earl Sandy, and another three-year-old triumph for Gallant Fox. That same year, 1930, marked an all-time great event in the golden era of golf. For 10 points, who did it? Bobby Jones. Now, Bill Shoemaker was there first. Bobby Jones. Bobby Jones is correct for 10 points. Don't forget to push the buzzers, men. All right, the second free throw. Both of you are still alive. Golden era of sports. Boxing's man was heavyweight champion Jack Dempsey. In 1921, Dempsey faced George Carpentier in the first million-dollar gate. Heavyweight champion of the world, Jack Dempsey on the left. George Carpentier, the light heavyweight champion of the world from France on the right. It's round four here at Boyle's 30 Acres in Jersey City. Over a million dollars paid by these 80,000-plus fans to see this heavyweight championship. Dempsey. Defending for the third time, very much in command here in round four. He's much heavier, 191 to the Frenchman's 175, and he's using it to full advantage. There's a good right hand, and Carpentier took it well, but he hangs on, trying to crowd Dempsey, take away his power. Dempsey using that left hand of the body, and that's softening up Carpentier. He hangs on dearly. But this is a tough customer from France, the Orchid Man. And it's a good left hand by Carpentier, and it's Dempsey this time who hangs on for a moment. Dempsey, however, frees the right hand. That's a good right hand of the chin. Dempsey with another right hand, and down goes Carpentier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
Nine, Carpentier struggles to his feet, but he's a beaten fighter, and Dempsey with two quick right hands, and Carpentier down again. I don't believe he'll make it. That's three, four, five, six. Rolls on his back at seven, eight, nine, ten. Jack Dempsey has defended his heavyweight championship of the world, knocking out Carpentier in round four. Well, it's a classic fight, and it's classic film. The reason why Carpentier jumped up so quickly, that was a hand-held and a hand-cranked camera that shot that great footage. <laughs> Your question, you're both alive. Jack Dempsey defended his heavyweight title on five other occasions during the 20s. For 10 points, from whom did Dempsey win the heavyweight title? It was in 1919. Five seconds. Johnny Longdon. Jess Willard is correct for 10 points. And after two rounds on Sports Challenge, the score, Brooklyn Dodgers 30, the Jockeys 20. And we'll be back with round three and a look at the greatest winning streak of all time right after this Sports Challenge timeout. The defending champion, Brooklyn Dodgers 30, and our team of Jockeys 20. All important toss-up round three, the category, record breakers. And here's Chick Hearn with an incredible basketball winning streak. 127 to 120. 11 seconds left to play. They haven't given him that last basket yet, but now they're moving the board. Ball front court to West. West baseline to Harrison. Harrison, 17-footer. No good. Tipped up by McMillan. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. The game's over. The Lakers have won 27 in a row. The Lakers set a new all-time mark for consecutive wins by a pro team in any sport with 27. What baseball team in 1916 set the pro record of 26 straight wins? Duke Snyder. New York Giants. New York Giants is correct. The Lakers breaking their mark. Free throws belong to the Brooklyn Dodgers. An all-time record breaker in his sport is our panelist, Jockey Eddie Arcaro. Let's watch him aboard Citation in the 1948 Kentucky Derby. And here's Mel Allen. On their way, the country's classiest three-year-olds in the nation's most famous race, the 100th to Drew and Billings. And now Thoroughbreds with Cole Town off to a flying lead and setting a fast pace. Opening up the six-length gap ahead of Citation S, turning into the home stretch. Eddie R. Carroll turns Citation loose. He catches Cole Town and then really pours it on in the run for the roses. Getting for home, Eddie R. Carroll goes all out to set a new record, riding his fourth derby winner, and Citation takes it all in a breeze. Fastest three-year-old in the land, that citation, and the Kentucky bred ace of the Calumet Farm bids fair to take America's triple crown. But right now, he's proud as punch. Excuse me, Julep, classic champion of the Bluegrass Classic, citation king of the Kentucky Derby. And the horse, of course, that Eddie Arkell indicated was the greatest that he has ever ridden. The question belongs to the Brooklyn Dodgers. Citation went on to win the triple crown for 10 points. Which of the following horses did not win the triple crown of racing alphabetically? Assault, Omaha, Seabiscuit, Sir Barton. Which one did not? Seabiscuit. Seabiscuit is correct. It did not win any leg of the triple crown. It is now 60 to 20 Dodgers, second free throw. Pitcher Bruce Keeson of the Pirates was a World Series record breaker in 1971, although the mark is one he would like to forget. The game is one he'll remember fondly. You think Bruce Keeson is a nervous bridegroom? 21-year-old Bruce Keeson of the Pirates will be married on Sunday. He's making quite a hit tonight in the fourth game of the World Series. Oh, misses Belanger, but he gets Johnson. He gets Echebarren and Frank Robinson. A new World Series record. Three men hit by pitches from Bruce Keeson. But the Orioles cannot solve the delivery of this young right-hander as he allows only one base hit and six in the third innings of relief. And Keeson on the base pass, a tough customer, as he wipes out Dave Johnson on this double play ball. Bruce Keeson of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Wrong cap. But on Sunday, he'll get two rings, one from his bride and one that will say World Series champion. The question, Keeson... Pitch six and a third scoreless innings in that game for 10 points, Dodgers. Who holds the World Series record for consecutive scoreless innings at 33 and two-thirds? You have five seconds. Whitey Ford. Whitey Ford is correct for 10 points. And after three rounds to score, the Dodgers 70, the Jockeys 20, fourth category, the unexpected. And if you watch our toss-up carefully, you'll see a most unexpected moment. Minnesota's Fred Cox has his field goal blocked. The ball trickles toward the Detroit goal line. 
The Lions let it roll, hoping it goes into the end zone, but number 83, Jim Mitchell, kicks the ball accidentally into the end zone. No one seems to notice it. And just as accidentally, Jim Lindsay falls on the ball, and he gets a touchdown. And a surprise for the Vikings fans and to the Lions defensive tackle, Bob Bell. For Jim Lindsay has sounded the death knell for the Lions in 1971. Your toss-up question worth 20 points. What member of that Viking team was named the 1971 most valuable? Jackie Robinson. Alan Page. Alan Page is correct. Named the MVP in the National Conference. The great defensive tackle of the Vikings. Free throws belong to the Dodgers. The category, the unexpected seventh game, 1955 World Series. You were all there. Pitcher's duel. Tommy Byrne of the Yanks. Johnny Padres of the Dodgers. Here's Chuck Benedict. Tommy Byrne pitching now to Duke Snyder. The bunt situation. Snyder lays it down, Byrne off the mound, throws to Scourin at first base. He's off the bag, drops the ball as Snyder bumps into him. Everybody is safe. After Roy Campanella sacrifices both men along, Stengel orders Tommy Byrne to walk Carl Farillo. So Bob Grimm comes on to face the Dodgers. Bases loaded, Gil Hodges the hitter. A fly ball deep to right center field. This should score a run. Bob serve over to make the catch, but Reese tags. He'll score to make it two to nothing, Dodgers. The Dodgers held on to not only win that game, but to go on and win your very first world championship for 10 points before that first win in 1955. How many times were the Dodgers the World Series losers? Was it four, five, six, or seven times? You have five seconds. I'd say five times. Five times is incorrect. You tend to forget the losses. You remember the wins. All right, Jackie. We'll double the point total for you if you can tell us how many times the Dodgers lost the series before six. they won it. Was it four, five, six, or seven? Six. Six is incorrect. They lost it seven times. Seven times before finally winning it. All right. The second free throw belongs to the Dodgers. In this race, the finish is unexpected, but it is absolutely incredible. Bill Shoemaker will believe it. It's 1958 at Santa Anita. If you like the come from behind performer, you had to love Silky Sullivan. 42 lengths behind on the backside in this race at Santa Anita. Look at the big red cold fly. Bill Shoemaker aboard. As they make the turn, Silky Sullivan still eight lengths behind the pack and 24 lengths behind the leader. Eighth of a mile to go, and look at Sullivan, guided to the outside by Shoemaker, and the big red cold is flying. Silky Sullivan in the middle of the pack. Coming down to the wire, Silky Sullivan is third. And Silky Sullivan wins the race incredibly. <laughs> Bill, I've seen that film now 20 times, and I still can't believe that Silky Sullivan... I don't Sullivan. believe it either, but... I <laughs> you were aboard it. All right, and Silky Sullivan certainly captured the imagination of all racing and sports fans. The question, however, belongs to the Dodgers. The race you just saw might very well be the most startling come from behind effort of all time. A garrison finish for 10 points. From what sport did the expression garrison finish originate? What sport? Five seconds. I have no idea. Rowing. What? Rowing. Rowing? No, that's incorrect. For 20 points in jockeys, where did Garrison finish that expression? Racing. Racing. Racing, that's right. Jockey Ed Snapper Garrison used to win his races that way, coming from behind. So 20 points for the jockeys. And after four rounds of score, the Brooklyn Dodgers 90, the jockeys 40. And we're very pleased to let you know that win or lose, all our panelists will receive the brand new Mattel Sports Challenge Instant Replay Quiz Game to enjoy at home. We'll be back with our biography round right after this Sports Challenge timeout. <laughs> Brooklyn Dodgers 90 and the Jockeys 40 and 90 points in the biography round. And with the clues, here's Johnny. Our superstar has and is still playing for a team in the Windy City. The year he turned pro, another rookie on the same team set a record by scoring 22 touchdowns. Our guest has only scored a total of three points since playing for his team, the Chicago Bears. His job is to keep opponents from scoring and he does it extremely well. 
It's no line when he's called the best to ever play his position and has no trouble backing it up. Stop the Brooklyn Dodgers. Dick Butkus. Dick Butkus is correct. Our mystery guest and the Brooklyn Dodgers are champions of sports challenge again. And here he is, the great middle linebacker of the Chicago Bears, Dick Butkus. They're dressing you well back in Chicago. Well, they pay good, even though we don't win much, but they pay good. <laughs> hey, last week on Sports Challenge, we saw, we saw that incredible catch you made in the end zone for an extra point, a 30-yard pass, and I understand that that was one you diagrammed in the huddle. No, <laughs> no, I, I told you before, that was, you know, with our kind of quarterbacks, that was, that'd be a little too difficult to diagram that kind of a play. So. <laughs> One of the all-time greats. Thank you for being on Sports Challenge. Dick Butkus of the Chicago Bears, ladies and gentlemen. I know they'd like to meet you over there. And fans, in a moment, we'll tell you all about our winners and next week's challengers. First, this Sports Challenge timeout. The Dodgers are champions, and with the official score, here's John. Well, it's true, Dick. The winners, again, of this sports challenge are the Brooklyn Dodgers. And the Neighborhood Evening Community Center of Brooklyn, New York, for whom they were playing, will receive $1,000 worth of AMF Void athletic equipment. Of course, there are no losers on sports challenge. Father Flanagan's Boys Home from Boys Town, Nebraska, for whom the Hall of Fame jockeys were playing, will receive $500 worth of athletic equipment from sports challenge. And by the way, if you have a junior athletic organization you would like represented, drop a line to Sports Challenge, 5800 Sunset Boulevard, Hollywood, California, 90028. Well, since the Brooklyn Dodgers won this week, they'll return next week. And Dick, who will be here to challenge them? Next week, the challengers will be a team of Dodgers, Los Angeles Dodgers, Wes Parker, Maury Wills, and Frank Robinson. They'll join our current champion, the Brooklyn Dodgers, and yours truly, Dick Henberg. And we'll see you all again next week on Sports Challenge.